this year I went to Finland. It's a wonderful place. It's a land of a thousand lakes and I'm bringing back wonderful anti-aging secrets from the land of the midnight sun. got back from a wonderful trip to Finland. Do you know that Finland in 2018 ranked number one on the World Happiness Report? One of the happiest countries in the world. The Finns also known for the one other thing and that is their love of licorice. You know that black licorice, the beans you always left in the bottom of the jar? Turns out that might actually be a healthy habit. The glycorrhizin in licorice is actually 50 times sweeter than sugar and has been listed in the writings of the Romans, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, and more as a uh, carmative that they've used to settle upset stomachs, as an expectorant for cough, and many other type of inflammatory activities. So, licorice, who knew? I even found one study where licorice flavonoid was given to groups of obese individuals. Uh, body fat and BMI and LDL was significantly reduced in those ingesting the oil compared to the controls who did not. And in another study, eating 3.5 grams of licorice a day, a little over an ounce, um, they reduced their body fat by 4% without any change in blood pressure. But before you buy bags of licorice, I can tell you that they, it does deplete potassium from your body and can cause the cortisol to be raised. So when enjoying your licorice, remember it's pieces, not bags. Next, let's talk about berries. Finland has more berries than I've seen anywhere in the world. Now, we're all familiar with blueberries and strawberries and uh, raspberries and so on, but they've got lingonberries, they've got cloudberries, and many, many more. As a matter of fact, as we're walking up to visit this one place, our guides were picking the berries as we went along saying, try this one and try that one. Uh, no, but don't touch that one, that's poisonous. So, good for me that they knew what they were doing. But berries also contain an important pigment called anthocyanins. And in a paper by Lee and colleagues that reviewed anthocyanins and their properties, they demonstrated an increased intake of anthocyanins decreased the risk of myocardial infarction by 12 to 32 percent. And uh, in one study, for every 15 milligram increase in intake, the relative risk of myocardial infarction went down, infarction went down by 17 percent. So, the thing is, how do we look at that in a practical sense? Well, Cassidy and his colleagues put together a nice table, and here you can see to see how, we, how much 15 milligrams of anthocyanin is in a practical manner. So, if you look here, you can see it's a half a cup of blue blueberries, gives us 120 milligrams of anthocyanins, uh, blackberries, 70 milligrams per half cup, and so on. And I'm a great fan of blueberries. I eat them every single day. Now, there's a law in Finland known as every man's right. And every man's right is the right for the Finns and even visitors to Finland to go and forage on people's property. So even if it's private property, as long as you take only what you need and you do no damage. So that explains as we're walking up the path to visit uh, basically a forest attraction, how my guides were happily picking berries and saying try this one and try that one and it was really great fun. So Finland, first another thing for us to take as a healthy habit is going out there picking berries and getting our anthocyanin intake up there. In Finland, if you sit down at a coffee bar and you start chatting to a Finn, they don't often, you have to do a little work, they often aren't very chatty to start off with, and you ask them, what do you like to do? The answer most likely will be something like, oh, I like to go to my house in the forest, or I like to go to the lake, or I like to go out to the park with my dogs and spend time in nature. There's actually a concept known as forest bathing, where people spending time in nature actually get beneficial health effects from it. There was actually a study done by Tuhig, Bennett, and Jones, and I'll read from their conclusion here. 
and it said a systematic review and meta-analysis of the green space exposure and health outcomes found that spending time in green space was helpful to many aspects of health and the quote from the paper is green space exp exposure is associated with wide-ranging health benefits with meta-analysis results showing statistically significant associations with reduced diastolic blood pressure, heart rate, salivary, cortisol, and incidence of type 1 diabetes and stroke all cause cardiovascular mortality as well as health denoting associations with pregnancy outcomes. So, we want to go out and spend some time in nature. It lowers our stress and we can actually mark, we can measure that the stress is lowered by spending time in nature by measuring the levels of cortisol. So, I'll see you out there in the forest. In Finland, many homes, even private homes, usually boast a sauna. Uh, taking a sauna, a nice warm sauna, can help increase your circulation, help increase healing, reduce the pain from sore muscles, and so on. But the other thing that goes hand in hand with this sauna bathing is the fact that often after the sauna, you run out and you jump into the lake, and that's often in winter as well. The Finns are known for winter swimming. Now, you know that a lot of biohackers are using cold exposure now, but I just want to point out the Finns did it first. Okay, cold shock. The cold shock can boost your immune system, reduce stress, enhance your circulation, increase your sex drive, help reduce inflammation, and even make you sleep better. And so the cold shock is actually very good for you, but the Finns that do this usually belong to swimming clubs. Uh, the clubs have a safe access and, you know, entry into the water and exit from the water. They generally start with a very slow acclimation, you know, of a few minutes. They, I'm sorry, not a few minutes, of a few seconds, you know, this is a quick dip. It's not a leisurely lull in the water. So, there are a few downsides to Finland, too. It's known as the land of the midnight sun. In summer, that means the sun can stay up until midnight, which is wonderful. But in the winter, in Helsinki in the south, light can be reduced to just a few hours. And in the north, it can be, it can be practically non-existent for a period of time. So that can lead to seasonal affective disorder. So with every place, there are some good sides and some bad sides. But I think we can walk away with the fact that if we can benefit by spending time in nature, increasing our berry intake, having a nice sauna, and possibly going for a cold swim or cold shower afterwards to increase our circulation and reduce inflammation. So, I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Until next time, this is Judy Chalice with Lifespan and Longevity. Please remember to like and subscribe.